In 1802, the Jews of the Belarusian city of Shklov received a letter written in Hebrew from unknown address. The letter read, Peace and blessing to the entire Jewish community. I'm sending you greetings. I heard from the Bukhara merchants that a lot of Jews live in the cities of Russia. Here, in Kizilgar, we don't know which Jews you come from. For our commercial affairs, we need to be in Russia, but we heard a rumor that our co-religionists are very much oppressed and persecuted there. If you believe that we will not bear harassment and loss, then please notify us. Peace to you, to all your children and your loved ones. He who calls open Israel a blessing, Benjamin said. Close Jews responded to this letter also in Hebrew. To our fellow believers and faithful servants of the Most High. How surprised we were, having received greetings from the Jewish brothers from a distant land, who didn't inform us about their place of residence and about their country, so we don't know whom to answer. Even though the city of Kizilgar is mentioned in the letter, we don't know in which country it is. After a long search, we found your country and the surrounding lands. This is Bukhara, big and small, bordering on the east with China, from the south with the country of the Great Mogul, from the west with the Caspian Sea, and from the north with Sungary and Kyrgyz Cossack steppes. Come to us, blessed by God, and we will be honored to see you. May the Almighty save you from all fears and horrors, and together we will thank Him. Because of their long-suffering history, Jews have lived almost in all corners of the world. Constant conquests, persecution and oppression force them to migrate, adapt and take root in new lands and new cultures. Jews have lived in Central Asia since ancient times. This subgroup is also called Bukharian Jews. Bukharian Jews are one of the most ancient communities formed over 2000 years ago. They are representatives of the Sephardic sub-ethnic group of Jews. In Central Asia, Jews appeared already in the 1st centuries AD. However, due to the lack of written sources, the only material about their life in the antique period is oral stories preserved in Jewish families. The earliest written information about Central Asian Jews dates back to the 12th century and belongs to Benjamin of Tudela, who visited this region in the Middle Ages. Detailed references are also contained in the works of European scientists and travelers of the 18th 19th century, such as Vanbury, Eversman, Kanikov, and others. There are many legends and traditions associated with the arrival of Jews in Central Asia. One of them tells the first Jews in Central Asia appeared even before the city of Bukhara, more than 2,500 years ago. 
Achaemenid ruler Cyrus the Great in the 6th century BC conquered Babylon and allowed the captive Jews to return to their homeland Judea. However, some of them decided that it would be safer for them to stay in Persia. Thus, the Persian Jews appeared. Subsequently, through Persia, they moved to the cities of Central Asia. Scientists' hypotheses also differ, but almost all of them are close to each other. It is believed that the ancestors of Central Asian Jews moved here from Persia. The settlement of various regions of Central Asia by Jews didn't occur simultaneously, but lasted for centuries and with unequal intensity, having found themselves on the territory of Iran during the period of the so-called Assyrian captivity. 6th century BC, the Jews gradually settled the neighboring territories. It is necessary to take into account the fact that the Central Asian regions had long been in the possession and under the influence of various Persian empires, and the Jews dependent on the Persians perhaps forcibly or voluntarily moved to Bactria and Sagd. It is said that 10 Jewish families were the first to move to Bukhara, who were skilled dyers that gradually created a separate industry in the Bukhara Emirate, workshops for dyeing fabrics and yarns. Jews successfully adapted in Central Asia, fully assimilated the culture and languages of local people, the native language of the Bukharian Jews became their own dialect, based on the Tajik language. After the conquests of Central Asia by Tsarist Russia, the Russian Tsar recognized the Bukharian Jews as equal along with all other people in the Turkestan general government. The legal inequality of Central Asian Jews was eased. They were allowed to buy houses and settle in the new part of Samarkand, Tashkent, Kokand and other cities. This was the heyday for Bukharian Jews. They owned factories, ginning workshops, distilleries in various cities of Central Asia. It was at this time, in the end of the 19th century, that the term Bukharian Jew appeared in official Russian documents. This was the name given to the Central Asian Jews who were subjects of the Bukhara Emirate territories that were vassals of the Russian Empire. After the October Revolution of 1917, the liquidation of the Bukhara Emirate and the national demarcation in Central Asia, the term Bukharian Jew became generally accepted for all local Jews, regardless of their place of residence. At the beginning of the Soviet period, the Central Asian Jews of Uzbekistan were first designated as Maida Millat, small nation, and later they simply ceased to distinguish them into a separate subgroup and in the statistical data of subsequent censuses they were included in the column Jews, together with European Ashkenazi Jews.
the traditional and monopolized sphere of activity of the majority of Central Asian Jews was the dying craft. When in the late 19th, early 20th centuries, cheap fabrics from Russia began to be imported to the Central Asian market in large quantities, the local dying craft became unclaimed. Among the Central Asian Jews were skilled jewelers, shoemakers, tailors, hairdressers, doctors. There were famous musicians and dancers who performed at feasts not only in their own community but also among Muslims. The best of them became the Emir's court singers and musicians. Women worked as laundresses cook for wealthy Muslims. There were many merchants among Central Asian Jews, from small peddlers and hawkers to large entrepreneurs. In the cities, Central Asian Jews worked in silk weaving, textile, garment factories, in cotton ginning, oil mills, ditch and brick factories, as well as in handicraft atolls. The traditional form of settlement of Bukharian Jews until the 1920s were mahallas, quarters, with kenisso, a synagogue, mikwa, ritual ponds, baths, own bazaars and cemeteries. There were religious schools at synagogues. Social life was revealed in the compulsory attendance of synagogue for all men, starting from the age of 13, where meetings were held to discuss various issues related to the community. They elected four men, kalontars. In addition, Various ritual ceremonies were held and refreshments were arranged here. The houses of the Central Asian Jews consisted of residential and household parts located along the perimeter, usually small courtyards. The blank walls of houses with small gates overlooked the street. Guest house Mehman Khona was the most elegant room in the house, often serving as a living room and synagogue. In the houses of the rich people, in front of the guest house, a high veranda, Ivan, with wooden carved columns and painted ceilings was arranged. Since the end of the 19th century, the houses of large entrepreneurs in Central Asia were built according to the European model. And today, some Bukharian Jews live in solid houses, inherited from their ancestors, which were built with very high quality. During the Soviet period, there was a new cultural development of the Central Asian Jews. Since the 1920s, a native Jewish national bureau was functioning. The Jewish Pedagogical Institute, which trained teachers for the regions where Jews lived. There were specialized Jewish educational institutions, 10 schools for preschool institutions, two labor schools, three boarding schools, six workers' clubs, three libraries. Over time, a significant stratum of the intellectuals of Central Asian Jews was formed, employed in almost all spheres of education and culture. In the 1930s, many books were published in the Bukharian Jewish language. A whole galaxy of musicians, artists and composers emerged from the diaspora of Central Asian Jews, 
For example, musicians Ilyas Malayev and Mukabat Shamayeva, as well as the world famous ensemble from Bukhara Shashmakom. After the collapse of the USSR, there has been a sharp decline in the diaspora of Central Asian Jews. This is due to the fact that the Iron Curtain fell and people were able to move freely. In 2000, the number of Bukharian Jews in Central Asia didn't exceed 3,500 people. But communities of Bukharian Jews still exist in large cities of Central Asia. The largest of them are in Bukhara, Samarkand and Tashkent. A significant number of Bukharian Jews immigrated to Israel, to USA, Germany, Austria and other countries. Today, the largest community of Bukharian Jews in the world lives in Israel, about 150,000 people. About 60,000 Bukharian Jews live in the United States and Canada, 50,000 of them in New York. This is the second largest diaspora of Bukharian Jews in the world. Although the Bukharian Jews today almost completely left Central Asia, they will forever remain in the history of this region. Their culture and traditions will remain an integral part of Central Asia, and they, in turn, don't forget their historical roots and often come to honor the memory of their ancestors who are buried in this land.